Hello, potential siblings in Christ. I'm Milos, and I'm a recovered atheist. And I'm Boyan. I sort of believed in God since I was a kid, despite no one in my surroundings believing in him, so this video isn't really for me. I guess I'll just sulk in the shadows, plotting, scheming. Also, we apologize for the audio quality in this one. We did the best we could with what we had at the moment. Today we're going to attempt to answer a dilemma. How to start believing if you don't believe but still want to? I would personally like to welcome all of the snide atheist comments that are sure to come here screaming at this video. Listen guys, I get it. I'm a pretty snide person myself. I don't blame you. I, I welcome your toxicity. We might not see eye to eye when it comes to God, but we are brothers in toxicity. Do you know we have a patron saint of toxic people? Saint Jerome, pray for us. Before we start, we suggest all the atheists watching this video to subscribe. Because you may not like what's coming and uh, better subscribe now where your opinion of this video and channel is at its all-time high. Subscribe? Good. Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines atheism as a state of disbelief in the Most Holy Trinity despite all the evidence to the contrary. Okay, I kid, I kid. Listen, let's ditch the definition. The fact of the matter is you don't believe in God, especially the one we preach, the Christian one. Or you just might be agnostic. Sorry for lumping you all together, the specifics don't matter that much for this video. There's a finite number of atheist types when it comes to their feelings towards God. The first group would hate him. The second group is kind of indifferent to him. And finally, the third group, the type this episode is primarily aimed at, are those who wish God was real. They find the idea of a loving God very comforting. Afterlife sounds great. And if you add the resurrection to the mix, all the better. Sadly, they think if only any of it were true. For the sake of argument, let us assume that God is real. In such a scenario, the poor, willing atheist is in a bit of a vicious circle. They could pray, but the prayer requires belief. And they prayed anyways, without belief. Why would God hear such a prayer that has not a single drop of faith in it? For those who wish that God is real, the Gospel provides a solution. Let us read the relevant passage. Don't skip it. It's important. Then one of the crowd answered and said, Teacher, I brought you my son, who has a mute spirit, and wherever it seizes him, it throws him down. He foams at the mouth, gnashes at his teeth, and becomes rigid. So he spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. He answered him and said, O oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him. And when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming at the mouth. So he asked the father, How long has this been happening to him? And he said, From childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire, into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion for us and help us. Jesus said to him, If you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, Deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him. See that short prayer of the desperate father, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief, that prayer is key to your own belief. The Father was in a similar predicament. Jesus could have just been another one of many wandering sorcerers who failed to heal his son. Yet, what if there was a chance that he is the real deal? And that is why the Lord heard his prayer, full of evident doubt as it was. It was an honest prayer. So if you want to believe, just say these six words, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. And it will set in motion things that cannot be stopped. Why is this prayer so powerful? The only one that requires no faith whatsoever. Well, it's simple. You probably know or have heard about the Old Testament being big on animal sacrifices. And you probably know how Jesus sacrificed himself on the cross for humanity. 
By uttering this prayer, you may not have faith that someone is listening, but you're sacrificing the most valuable thing of all, your ego. You're bleeding it dry on the altar. You are crucifying it on the cross. To you, it may be a simple acceptance of the fact you might be wrong, but for God, that crack will probably be enough for him to fill the entire chamber of your soul, eventually. How will God hear your prayer? Now, we come to an important aspect. You must have no expectations how and when God will answer it. It might be in a day or on your deathbed. It might be completely mundane or it might be very supernatural. It might be after an extremely painful episode of your life, a rather typical one. Whatever it is, set no expectations. Now, you might say, aren't I betraying my principles? Well, you know, isn't love of truth also one of your principles? Saying this prayer will do absolutely nothing if God isn't real. But if he is, you've just made a first step, however small, on a wonderful journey that lasts until eternity itself. Thanks to all our lovely donors who help us create all these videos. If you want to hear more about atheism, this time from Boyan, you can listen to his thoughts on atheism or simply see the differences between atheism and orthodoxy. Bye!